Welcome to all Caribbean entrepreneurs. If you've been ready and waiting to take your business digital and get paid online while you sip something strong on the beach, this podcast is for you. We'll hear from the Caribbean's finest entrepreneurs on topics like e-commerce, business development, brand building, social media, their wins and failures. This is the only place in the region helping you navigate the digital age from the Caribbean's perspective. This is Digipreneur FM. And now, let's give it up for the Digiboss himself, Mr. Karan Rose. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Digipreneur FM podcast. Today's show, we got a live recording of our interview with the president of the JTDA, the Jamaica, the Jamaica Technology Digital Alliance. We have interviewed the president, Ms. Stacy Hines. So this episode is from is a live recording from our from our Digipreneur Live event that we did with her to talk all about the BizTech 2021 conference. This is the largest conference in the Caribbean that meshes technology and business. So we are going to be going through that episode today. This was a really, really good conversation that we had with her. We dove into you know all the topics um, that are going to be happening within the conference. We started talking about you know how e-commerce, fintech, NFTs, virtual reality, augmented reality, how different scenarios that these things can help the entire Caribbean region. We dove into some of the key issues the region is facing right now going through this these COVID times. And we talked a little bit about some of the solutions that we are both trying to be involved in and, you know, what else kind of needs to happen. But overall, uh, this conversation was about, again, the, the upcoming BizTech conference that is happening. It's a three-day event that's going to be happening this week, and all the details are going to be in the show. Show notes, and you guys are going to be able to register uh, for this three day event. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And it starts tomorrow, right? There's going to be speakers from all across the Caribbean region and diaspora. Um, and again, I, I'm, I'm actually really excited about the conference because there's some topics that, you know, I'm, I'm now really starting to dive into. For me, one of the big, one of the big, um, topics right now that uh, I'm trying to fully immerse myself in is the is NFTs. So I want to start learning way more about it than than just the digital art aspect. But there's so many use case scenarios for NFTs um, that can really help the creative sector and not just the creative sector. I mean, the, the way NFTs is being used is really going to revolutionize tons of different industries. So again, it's a topic that I'm I'm really excited about. And I'm really to see you know some of the esp- yeah, some of the experts that they bring into the table to talk about that and again we're gonna i think they're gonna be focusing more on the digital art side but i mean there are gonna be gems that we can pick out of so let's get right into this conversation with uh with with stacy hines and again make sure you guys um check the show notes go and register for the biz tech conference it is from it starts from tomorrow november 10th the 11th and 12th i'm actually going to be speaking at the event as well and i'm going to be talking about um i'm going to be on a panel with other podcasters we're going to be talking about how podcasting is kind of changing the media landscape and again we're going to be some a, a really really good conversation i'll be joined by paul stennett and henneka watkins porter and she's like one of the biggest podcasters in the caribbean who's been able to interview the likes of richard branson john lee dumas from entrepreneurs on fire and so many of the biggest names out there she's been able to get onto her show so i'll be it would be a pleasure sharing the sharing the floor with paul and henneka as well so without further ado folks Let's get into the episode, the interview with Miss Stacy Hines. Do 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 do. 
Welcome back to another edition of Digipreneur Live. It has been so long. It's been so long. It's been quite some time since I've been able to get on live with you guys. And you guys know that I love talking to you live. It's the best time to engage. We have a lot of fun anytime we do our Digipreneur Digipreneur live segment. And it's been some time because, I mean, I've been busy. Your boy has been busy from doing a wide variety of conferences to workshops. We have been busy. But you know what? From time to time, I got to make sure I check back in with you guys. But anytime we go live and we have a guest on the Digipreneur live show. You guys know we come with, you guys know we come with bombs. You know we come with heat. And today, today, tonight, is no change of pace. We're gonna, we're gonna turn things up a whole, a whole notch. So before we get started, all right, before we get started, please let me know where you are tuning in from. Who do we got? The first comment comes in from Prince. Breeby, what going on, Prince? <laughs> then we have Desiree. Desiree, greetings. Everything is okay, Desiree. I hope you are doing okay too. Let me know where you guys are tuning in from. Are you tuning in from Jamaica? Are you tuning in from St. Lucia, Barbados, Guyana, Montserrat? Are you tuning in from Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Are you in the U.S.? Are you in the U.K.? Are you in Canada? Let me know in the comments where you are watching the broadcast from tonight. <laughs> you guys know we got to do a bit of a roll call. I want to make sure that we have the entire region covered. So let me know in the comments where you guys are tuning in from tonight, all right? Today's guest, today's guest. Well, look at that. Hold on. Before we even get into that. People are letting us know. So Prince is coming in from Ghana. We got we got Ghana in the building. We got Trinidad and Tobago in the building. Let me know where you guys are tuning in from tonight, right? Let us know in the comments. I love to see where you guys are watching from because you never know. We got Ghana in the building. So just when you think that your business in the Caribbean is local and you are only appealing to people in your country, when you build your website, you build your digital presence, when you start going live and you start talking some much needed things, you start to attract people from all over the globe. And even if they're outside of your immediate market, there are people that still tune into what happens in the Caribbean to see what they can learn from the Caribbean and bring back into their home countries. All right. So you guys make sure you build your businesses online and don't just stay local. All right. Tonight's guest, I'm excited for. This is somebody who I can't stop seeing my timeline. This boss lady is all over the internet. She's all over the interwebs and she's doing a whole heap of things. <laughs> Today we are joined by the president of the JTDA and the host of the popular podcast, The Balanced Lady Boss. This woman is also the CEO and founder of the company Epic Transformation. She is a business and life coach for professional women to live and lead so they can experience a deep sense of contentment. She is the author of the five-year love affair book and that captures her transformation from being a breast cancer survivor all the way up to the tech boss that she is today. I want you guys to give a warm welcome, Digipreneur Live. Please drop some flames in the chat. Give it up for <laughs> Miss <laughs> Stacy Hines. <laughs> no, like, Karen, no. For real, though, we have to do this again tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that just so I can get the intro and the bombs and the fire. And <laughs> I feel nice, Listen. man. Listen, I've I've learned I've learned from the best. Me and Terry Curl have practiced the intros. So anytime I have to bring on the guest, I can come correct. I like it. I like it. Big up Terry. You know? So how are you? How you been? Let me tell you, I'm I'm really good. You know, actually, 
I'm, I'm in a nice zone right now. You know, when you spend a couple months well, pulling out to here, you feel like you're a little stressed out and you're a little anxious and you're just trying to control all the moving parts of this big thing, this mega yes. activity that we're about to take on for three days. No, I'm just like, let's execute, let's deliver, you know? So um, I'm feeling really settled in my bossness, as you call it. I love it. And looking forward to an amazing experience. So that's the feeling, but behind the scenes is madness. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, and, and you know what? And you, you are doing some of the most important work in the region right now. So you definitely have to get... We got to drop a bomb for that because the work that you and the GTDA is doing is yeah. needed. It's needed, yeah. you know? So let us jump right into it because I know you have, your time is limited. We have a lot to talk about before you got to get back to getting what, to doing what you got to do, right? right? So we are gathered here today to talk about Biz Tech. 2021 for those who have never heard about it because this is the first time they are you know starting their business this is the first time they've had to start thinking about technology and integrating it into their business what is the biz tech conference stacy take it away <laughs> all right so um biz tech conference is a hybrid event this year because you know covid still keeping so it's a hybrid event where we are actively seeking to connect persons in the region with everything that's going on technology wise so we are we're sharing innovation and technology trends we're sharing concerns and issues that are at stake for everybody so you know everybody has big concerns about education everybody has been big concerns about connectivity how about leadership how about e-commerce and fintech you know your payment gateways all the different ways and things that you need to be thinking about for advancing your business advancing yourself as an individual in the tech space. We are covering all that and more in a virtual conference that is starting on Wednesday and is going over three days. So it's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And each day is a different focus area. And the reason we break it up like that is because it's a lot of information and we want to make sure that we're able to get across the messages that are really key for the persons on the other end of the screen. We're talking right. about all the people who are already in business, whether your business micro, like is you and another person or just you alone, right. or it large. That means that you know, you're big like the, the banks and so forth. There is something in the space for everybody. And the truth is, you know, that we put technology on the back burner. Everybody want to talk about them love life. Them want to talk about them bank account. <laughs> them want to talk about them fitness. You know, me too fat and too slim and have enough muscle, whatever it is. But they don't realize mm. that technology is beneath all of that Everything. right now. We can't get up and not use a phone, right? Correct. The other day when Facebook popped down, the whole of the region and the world was scrambling because persons had not been paying attention. But guess what happened now, Karen? Talk to me. Everybody come back online the next day. And so we forget that we need to understand tech a little bit better, right? And so that's what the conference is here to address. The conference is here to address any questions that you may have or even curiosities that you may have about technology and how it affects you, the regular person. And it, it, no matter whether you're in school as a student yeah. or you're a veteran in the space, there's something that we're going to talk about that's going to touch you. I love it. I love it. Now you yeah. made some. You, you brought up a, a, a an important event, and that yeah. was that Facebook outage where Facebook went down, Instagram went down, WhatsApp went down, and everybody was in a in a state of panic. Right? Yeah. Talk to me about the importance of this conference and the timing of it, given the fact that we are still in COVID. And, you know, this isn't the first time this year that Facebook hasn't popped down. It, it's been a couple right. times now. Yeah. How, how important is the timing of this event now that we have been experiencing COVID? We are seeing yeah. what happens with these network outages. And we know that businesses need to be online in some shape or form to conduct business. How important is the timing of this event? 
Yeah, so um, so that's a great question, Karen. And I think that especially at this point in the year where we're getting ready for one of the busiest seasons for most businesses, right? We're, we're talking about, you know, the holiday season is approaching and persons have become very heavily reliant on these social media platforms. Mm -hmm. what, what is escaping most persons is that they don't recognize that there is a whole universe of opportunities for people to connect with potential customers and potential right. leads beyond social media. So that's why there was such a panic because we don't understand the end-to-end -end experience of e-commerce. Right. We don't care about how to utilize these platforms as just a way to attract people, but then you're moving them into your own space so ah. that you can then build relationships, nurture those relationships, and create now customers for yourself directly. So the timing of it, I believe, is ideal because we need to start thinking through e-commerce and, and, and thinking through financing our businesses online because we're st pandemic is still keeping it's still a yeah. party over here with COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so what that looks like is doing business online and even post pandemic people are now accustomed to doing business that way yeah. and so we don't have a choice but to meet the customer where they are it's been proven over and over again right so persons who may have had there are businesses out there, and this is especially for the for the smaller business owners, right? right. They have their businesses and their entire um, population that they talk to is on Instagram, on Facebook, on WhatsApp. Right. And it's literally one company owned the whole of that. Right. Right? And so when now something as, as tragic as this event takes place, it makes people perk up their ears, but they perk up their ears just for the moment. Correct. So this conference is supposed to now help you understand why you have to listen beyond the momentary incidents. Because right. with, with tech, you're going to have momentary incidents all the time. You have to know the full experience and understand the full gamut behind the things as to why you have to do what you have to do. Meet them, greet them, and exactly. <laughs> That's where you said it well. Right. She said That's it right. right. Yes, so, absolutely. Daisy, talk to me. What is the dangers that we need to stress to Caribbean people when they are okay. only building their business on social media? What is the danger of doing that? Yeah, well, well, first of all, the danger is that you don't create a relationship with persons directly. And mm. so they believe that your brand is only available to them in one place. Right. It also means that you're not casting your net wide enough mm. because digital marketing, the sphere of digital marketing is not just social media. Social media has really just gained traction in the last five years or so. But right. email is still the number one way to connect with and convert, right? right? So the danger is that you guys are leaving money on the table. That's what is the biggest danger. You're leaving <laughs> money on the table. And you're also relying on somebody else's platform to direct the way that your customer's potential data is being managed, right? Remember that we have all of this thing about security, you know, you see cyber security, it's another thing that persons aren't paying attention to that we're going to be deep diving into at the conference. Right. Cybersecurity is so critical. And one of my speakers that I have um, is actually the chairperson of the UK Cybersecurity Council. Right. That's a big up, big up job. Right. Yes. And when um, and she's actually um, a Jamaican born person. Mm -hmm. So she comes back. Yes, it's a Jamaican sitting right there at the top. Yeah. I just love it. Right. You see Caribbean people everywhere and in everything. No. All over the place. And when I was inviting her to talk and, you know, she wanted to have a meeting to, to discuss this. And I was sitting and I was telling her that this is really critical. And I think we need to talk about it because there have been so many breaches, you know, that we're not familiar with, etc. I just said, you know, Stacy, I, I, I think it's it's important that persons understand this and I see why you are so passionate. But do you actually believe that people in the Caribbean are ready for this conversation? Aye. Because I'm not seeing it. And I said, well, Mrs. Natterson, with all due respect, if we don't have the conversation, then they will never see it. 
Correct. And she said, you have a point, right? And so this is where now we're going to have that conversation with the experts. We're talking about global experts that can bring the real, real and hopefully help people to check into what is actually happening in the space. Yeah, it, it really is a chicken and the egg conversation because just like we were talking off, off, um, offline, there are some topics that are being brought up in the conference. And I'm like, we haven't even strung those letters together here in Trinidad. And I can't even imagine some of the smaller islands are having yeah. those conversations. But unless we have those conversations and we start to teach and educate on use case scenarios to, for how this technology um, can help us in our day-to-day -day lives and propel yeah. The, the, the region forward and the culture forward, unless we start having these conversations, we can't expect people to just wake up one day and say, aha, yes. AR for my business. Let me just get some, a, some augmented reality shopping. It's not going to happen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. No, really so not. We, we really do have to lead, have these conversations and try to break it down as, as bite size and simple as possible for people to Absolutely. grasp and kind of bring them up. Throughout the process. Absolutely. And that's what thought leadership is all about. I think I think one of the, the, the opportunities that we have here in the Caribbean is really to leapfrog, right? Mm. Uh, we have an opportunity to leapfrog. I think we, we, we kind of get accustomed to learning from the North Star. Like we look to the North Americas and we look to Europe and UK to say, you know, okay, let's let's piggyback, let's follow. You know, you'll hear um, I, I wrote a, 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 an article, actually, a couple of articles about how, you know, persons in, in the different public sector areas always looking at like an Estonia or they, they look at um, a Singapore. They're always looking at sure. these countries that have already done the do, right? Yeah. But they look at them, they look at them in these, in these silos because you can't look across the ocean and say, well, Estonia has digital IDs and they have it everywhere and it's working perfectly. Let's implement digital IDs. It don't work like that. Estonia have leadership. Estonia have a, a, um, a concerted um, effort around um, a strategy. You know, you have to, it's not just a, this is the tactic or this is the idea. Let's do that. Wholesale. Right? Wholesale. You understand? And I think this is one of the reasons why, Karen, it, it, this conference is really seeking to take a Caribbean focus. We want everybody, yes, it's a Jamaican host, but we want everybody to come and to participate and to pay attention and to drop comments to figure out what's important to you guys. Because believe it or not, our governments listen. Whether them listen because we're complaining or we're advocating or them listen because we put up a news article and them feel a way and they need to respond to it, whichever way it goes, they will listen. And if we're right. not speaking and if we're not, our voices are not being heard, then when is, when are we going to actually see anything coming back around right. the fold? Right. Yeah, honest, this is no longer an option is basically what I'm saying. At some point, we have to adapt or die. It's yeah. relatively straightforward. Yeah. And you see, and, and, and you brought, again, so many key points. But the fact that one of the biggest areas that we struggle with is the localization of the strategies that mm. we, you know, when, mm. again, we look abroad for everything else. I, I don't mm. mind if we look abroad and we get the ideas, but then I, we don't try to localize the solutions mm -hmm. for our context. And I think one of, the, one of the biggest challenges for me when I moved here was that from the outside we just think of the Caribbean as like one big region. So you'd imagine that what works in Trinidad works in Jamaica. And then you come here and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Not only does half the things, more than half the things that we've learned in the U.S. and Canada don't work in the Caribbean, but then you're telling me that what works in Trinidad doesn't work in Jamaica and doesn't work yeah. in... Yeah. So we yeah. can never... Take yeah. an idea and a strategy and bring it wholesale here without localization. But this is where we need more collaboration throughout the entire Caribbean. So we could see yeah. what are the challenges in Jamaica? What are the challenges over here? And yes. really come together to build a holistic strategy for the entire region. Oh, gosh. Yes, Karan. You're talking my language now. I think I can't tell you how much time I write about leadership and strategy and where is it and when are we going to see it? You know, right. I think one of the things that we struggle with in the Caribbean region is we suffer from P 
PR, you know, we like the, the, the public relational um, experiences. We like to see the names in ha- headlines. We like to but launch. We like to launch. It launch, but I can't see the outcome. I don't know what it's delivering. I'm not able to actually tell the North Star and how you're getting there. I cannot see the transformation, right. which is what I am all about. Whether right. it is I'm doing it for JTDA or I'm doing it for Epic right. or I'm doing it for any of the clients that I work with. I'm all about seeing us articulate a vision, building a strategy around how we're going to get to that. And then you can talk about executing the different ideas. Correct. Right. The conference was the same path. I mean, we are operating as a nonprofit right. organization on a literal shoestring budget. Right. And the way that we are able to, to create something of this magnitude and of this impact is because we have a vision and then we have a strategy and right. we have leadership and collaboration around getting to that outcome. The same has to happen for the Caribbean region as as it relates to digital transformation. Love it, love it. That being said, talk to me. What are some of the core um, concepts that you guys are going to be diving into in the event? All right, so excitement, no excitement. All right. (laughs) So it's three days, and um, I'm going to mention the, the, the... the fact that it is a hybrid event, right? So we are very present to the COVID challenges. And so we're doing most of the speaking um, and workshop kind of um, engagement on Hopin, which is our online event platform that we're using. Right. And that is divided up over the three days. So day one is the focus is innovation and it's called innovation in action. Like right. we don't just want to talk about the things that happen. We want to hear how it's been implemented and how it's affecting different um, outcomes, different sectors. So on that day, we actually have conversations around how innovation is being thought through for public and private sector. And we have some C-suite leaders um, having that discussion. We talk about innovation in security, including not just cybersecurity, but also you know video and storage, because security doesn't just mean the online part. You still have right. the other aspects as well. Right. And then we're going to be touching on education, on the NFT art that you were talking about. We're going to have a, um, a couple of artists on discussing that. Love it. And then, of course, digital marketing. Like, we couldn't talk about innovation without talking about the marketing side of things. Right. Um, and then on the second day now, which is day two, which is Digital Transformation Day, uh, we're now going to be talking about disruption in the space and how digital, um, the digital shifts are actually creating a lot of challenges and changes mm. in all the areas so right. we're going to bring back in now talking about how companies like big companies um what is the new role of the leaders in the tech space so your cios like what exactly is it that they're doing to navigate all of these disruptions that are coming we're going right. to talk about um the creative side because you know you can't act like say it's just one industry alone and it's it's, it's all private sector so what's happening with the film industry we have somebody coming to to talk with us about that and then now one of the main areas that is becoming a major disruptor not just in our region but everywhere is the workforce so we're going to be touching on workforce transformation because there's a huge shortage of tech um tech skilled people both in the region as well as globally like everybody is hiring right now for tech resources right right it's never been seen before the amount of persons that are hiring this space so we're going to be doing that we're also going to be talking about ai and the way that ai is actually creating an opportunity for transformation and maybe you know what are we paying attention to in that space so we have that whole gamut around it and then we have some of the big wigs that are actually the ones leading in that space so we have a, a whole session with google around um um AI and data. We have SAP coming on to talk about simplifying transformation. Right. And then, of course, we also have Microsoft that's going to be coming in as well. And, right. and Microsoft and SAP have been really big sponsors and supporters of the event. So we're great, very grateful to them for that. And we're going to take on as well, not just, you know, conceptual things. We also want to make sure that we touch on implementation stuff so we have a a, a session that's completely dedicated to that where people who have actually gone through digital transformation because it's so you know but behind the scenes is a whole heap of effort 
and a whole heap of coordination and strategizing that is a part of it. And of course, we want to make sure that we touch on the whole broadband thing, um, you know, where people are connected or not connected and what that issue, the issues that they have there. And then day three now is what we're calling FinTech Friday. So it's all about the money bag on right. Friday. Secu okay. Yes. Securing the bag is exactly what it's all about on the Friday. So I know that if we don't get attendance, no other day, everybody must show up. Friday <laughs> so they can out. Hopefully we'll make sure that they're getting that bag. Right. So we're going to be touching on investing quite a bit because I know that uh, throughout the Caribbean region, one of the things that's been the kind of conversation pieces, will the next unicorn come from the Caribbean? And there are lots of very smart techies out here who have great ideas for business and they can't figure out how to get funding. Right. So we're actually going to be doing several different discussions around um, funding for fintechs and we actually have um, a multi-funder that's going to be coming on and from Silicon Valley to talk about you know some of the the, the behind the scenes the do's and don'ts and how to actually succeed at fundraising and of course we couldn't forget our business owners who are um, your primary audience Karen where we're going to be now talking about um, e-commerce and really being able to to navigate that space of the end-to-end -end approach to building out and running your business online. So there's a masterclass on that, and we also have um, another a couple of persons coming on to talk about e-commerce and digital payments. Mm -hmm. and, and so that discussion is gonna be really, really, really important. And then we're gonna be um, rounding out the day with a conversation from the Tech Beach guys, where they're gonna be showcasing a couple of their com tech companies that have actually gone through their accelerator program. And I right. know that a couple of entrepreneurs from Trinidad have actually participated in that right. accelerator program and the wider region as well there's Correct. quite a few of them that went through the first round now this is all happening virtually now in the middle of that on the wednesday and the thursday we have um here for it yes let's go in the middle of that we have wednesday and thursday if you're on the island of jamaica um next year karen we have a coordinator maybe we can do something at ue in trinidad um, i'm trying to be in jamaica <laughs> Let's coordinate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can't talk about that offline. We can talk about that offline. All right, so in the middle of that, what's going to be happening at UWE on Wednesday and Thursday is we're going to actually be be having um hybrid hybrid experience so this is where the live exhibits are going to be right. so on the wednesday we have live exhibits that are specifically related to um iot devices you know how to safeguard your home we have innovate 10x coming to actually showcase their their devices then we also have um liz the robot who is from our community um that's going to be um around saying hi or whatever else they're going to program her to say right. um from new tech innovation lab and they'll be showcasing a couple of their other projects as well and of course, we're going to be having our NFT art displays. We'll have some nice LCD screens that have been um, supplied for us by one of our other sponsors, Phase 3. And we're going to be showcasing NFT art um, on that day. And then we also have a couple of gaming stations that are going to be up. So people can relieve some stress if they want to come by and just hang out and play video games for a couple of hours. They can come and hang out and do that with us. And then on that day also, we are going to be launching our new marketplace which is a gold digital marketplace called um, it's for the B2B space. So for the audience that is going to be paying attention to this, you can also, you know, check it out because it's all about connecting with tech vendors to help you go digital. Right. That's what the marketplace is about. And we're going to be launching that on Wednesday live from University of the West Indies. And then on the Thursday, we're going to have some of the same persons, but we're also now going to have um, our VR stations where persons can come and put on the goggles and have the full VR experience on the Thursday. So that's going to be happening live. If you're on the island, um, you know, you'll be able to experience that. And of course, COVID protocols are going to be observed. Of course. So, you know, we're going to make sure that everybody is, is, is enjoying the event in a safe way. But yeah, so that's the rundown. It sounds wicked. This is Ooh, it's a jam pack. This is a jam pack event. But yeah, I wanna man. I wanna dive into it a bit a, a bit more. So in going in in the planning of this event, right? I know <laughs> planning it and getting all the moving pieces was was hell, still hell. You're still getting everything done. But what were some of the challenges that you guys 
and your team have seen in the Caribbean market that you said to yourself, hey, we're doing this event. We want to talk about a lot of things, but you see these, you know, top three challenges. We yeah. need to address these because they are imminent right now. What were some of those challenges that you guys seen that you want to ensure that you guys really drove home on trying to bring solutions with this conference? Yeah. Um, well, that's a great question. And um, I think you'll be able to tell based on just how many um, sessions we have on certain topics. So first things first, education. Mm. Um, education and just that workforce skill set space. We have like four different discussions around it right. coming at it from different angles. And the reason why we focus so heavily on education is because we feel that there is a shadow pandemic happening with our children right now. Yes. Um, because there are so many of them that have been disconnected throughout the course of this pandemic, or even if they are connected, they're just not getting the level of educational support that they need to get. And so we have brought in persons from um, primary all the way through tertiary um, academia institutions to right. come on and talk about the solutions that are in the space, both the challenges as well as the solutions that are in the space so that persons can, can take on um, insights from these thought leaders and utilize those things to help with their own strategies. Yeah. The second area that we're focusing on, which we think is critical, is really digital transformation. And I know I spoke about it at a high level, saying that we have a whole day dedicated to it, but there's so much that falls within digital transformation. A couple of things include cybersecurity, right. right? And organizational leadership in the tech era and how we are managing actually going through a transformation. Because for some persons, I think they were thrust into it by COVID. It's like they wake up one day and work is like, okay, work from home today. And you've never yet connected to VPN. Right. You, don't know, you don't have a laptop. You don't know nothing about server, what they're talking about. You know, um, Wi-Fi, I don't have Wi-Fi at home. How down are going to get, you know, so there were just so many different things that came about through the pandemic and we feel the need to actually talk to persons about this. So right. from cybersecurity to the actual transformation process right. is another area that we think is critical. And then third is, is the financial um, component, is going right. digital. Our MSME sector is critical for every country in the world right now it's not just the region that is trying to really embolden this sector it's everywhere right. and so because it's such a we're at such a critical point um for this this specific sector we want to make sure that they have the information that they need around technology um we talk a lot about you know financing these guys but the truth is you can give them money but they, they can't apply it so the capacity and capability they need through tech, then your money going to waste. Correct. Right? So we have to make sure that we are taking care of that group. So that I would say that's kind of the top three. Those and, no, and those are some key, those are some very key areas. Now I, there's there's one there's one challenge that I've kind of I can see happening and I want to get your thoughts. With the Caribbean stepping up their game in terms of the infrastructure with technology, I remember when I moved here in 2013, when I touched down, Netflix was buffering. And when I did a speed check, we, we barely had one megabit per second. We are now oh, getting wow. gigabits. We are now getting gigs now. The technology and the infrastructure is growing. Um, and we can now start to learn online from any institution anywhere in the world. Can you see a situation where we start we, we, we start losing our talent to other countries. They're still here. They're still living in Jamaica. They're still living in Trinidad. And we're earning U.S., so we're living good. But can you see a situation where more of our talent is now working remotely for other countries, building up those other countries and not staying here or not working in the companies here? Yeah, so... If I can see it, um, and maybe you're right, when we were talking offline earlier, saying that, you know, boy, you see some things happening over here that you don't see happening over there as yet. Well, that is already happening here, mm -hmm. quite significantly, as a matter of fact. And um, I sit on a couple of boards that are actively working to not only create that, but to also make sure that it is happening in a way that doesn't hurt our economy. Mm. And uh, we do have a couple of 
those discussions happening on um, between the Thursday and the Friday around workforce transformation and also around um, IT outsourcing. Because one of the things that definitely happened to us, if you remember in the 70s, 80s, there was a huge conversation. Maybe I don't know if you're, you're aware of this, Karen, but there was a huge discussion around um, brain drain. It's a very familiar phrase yep. here in Jamaica. We talk about brain drain. And a large part of why you find that that tends to happen where um, persons, you know, migrate, they leave and go away is because they don't feel that they have the opportunities available here, right? So even though I would say that we have a critical need on the island as well for those same resources, I would rather a person stay here and bring that FX, that you know, that 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 foreign currency back to the islands and spend the money within our economy than actually picking up and leaving. So it's right. like, yes, it's not just seeing when it's going to happen. It has already started for us, Correct. but it's making sure that we have the correct strategies in place. There goes that word again. Yeah. Um, to, 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 to safeguard our own economy so that we have somewhat of a balance. Um, as a global citizen, I moved back to Jamaica right around probably the same time you did. Mm. Um, and um, and I, I would say that I've lived in the U.S., I've lived in Canada, and I've, I've lived here. And um, as a global citizen, I want to see where we're able to leverage our, our, our uh, access that we have to all these markets. And while we're doing that, there's more than enough for everybody. It's just yes. for us all to tap into that abundance mindset and to let go of this feeling like I can't share, I can't collaborate, crabs in a barrel kind of thing, um, which is what ultimately creates um, the brain drain or the fear that we're going to lose out if people tend to leave. Correct. I, 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 I agree with everything you said. Um, now, we can see what the negative impacts of that are. But again, as you said, it's better for people to be here and bring in the Forex, even if they're working for companies abroad. But let's talk about the good side of that. The flip side is... This now creates opportunities for everybody yeah. <laughs> as long as you are willing to take a chance. Now, the question I have for you is, are you seeing a high uptick of more people looking to get gigs internationally and not limiting themselves to the opportunities in the country? Because one of the big challenges that I see on a daily basis in Trinidad is every other day in the newspaper, there's complaints about what the government isn't doing to create employment. And I sit here with a little few grains of my head, pulling the rest of them out, thinking, why do we need the government to create the employment when we have, the pandemic has gifted us so many new opportunities. There are so many new industries, there are so many new skills for us to learn digitally. And then we can then, the world is now our clientele and we don't have an issue with getting paid online and getting paid in US. Do you see a high uptick in that happening in Jamaica or, or is it is it is there still a big room for improvement? Because for us, there's a big room for improvement over here. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I would say that um, I see that there's been a high uptick, certainly. Um, I think it's probably more the opposite end of the scale where we are more concerned about um, persons actually doing that more than they are inputting, you know, for local companies, right. right? So what I mean by that is you find that persons are looking for those opportunities overseas. I mean, right now we have um, one tech company that is heavily recruiting um, Jamaican engineers, and there is a lot of talk about it. It's in the news. It's everywhere, right? right. Um, separate and apart from that, you also have um, one of the government um, agencies that is actively focused on upskilling for outsourcing. Right. And so um, you, you do have persons that are looking um, outward for, for jobs. And Similar to some of the programs that you and I run, right. um, there are also other persons here that are running programs to help um, individuals get a start online. So doing that digital training and connecting them with opportunities, whether it's through Upwork or Fiverr, etc. 
um, you do have quite a few persons who are taking advantage of that. And it's not that they're looking for these jobs and then not looking for opportunities in, in Jamaica. I have persons who work for me right. who have more than one job. They have them Jamaica job and right. they also have where they're providing these. You know, them always talk about island people have how much job. I'm one of those persons. I have how much job. Right. And so I expect that I should be able to be connected to to multiple sources of income. The pandemic has gifted us with ease of doing business. The world is truly flat again. It is fully integrated and a lot of, even from an international perspective, a lot of the pushback that we used to get, right, about persons working for overseas companies. A lot right. of that has got kind of on the back burner because so many persons are in need of resources. So I would say that we've definitely seen an uptick. Um, I would say that I would want us to be careful that we don't lose too many of our skilled mm. persons. So that's where more we, where we are on the curve. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. That makes sense. Now, I want to touch on... I want to touch on, uh, there's a couple of things that you guys are going to be talking about into the conference. And again, when we hear these words to most people, they're buzzwords or again, they're not, they, nothing comes to mind when they think about it. But I want to see if you can give us some use case scenarios for how these things could actually help the Caribbean um, propel forward. Let's get into, you know, virtual reality, um, augmented reality, NFTs. What are some use case scenarios for these things that can help um, the Caribbean people kind of understand how this could work and how it could actually benefit the region, other than us playing games or making an avatar to be on Facebook. <laughs> right, right. No, no, no. That's a great question, um, Karen. And um, what I would say is we actually last year when we had the event, because it's an annual event, last year we had um, someone um, come on um, to speak about, he actually owns a company that that's all they focus on is VR. It's a large company out of the US. I think they're based in New York and they run, um, they run AR and VR campaigns for big companies like a Chanel and, 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 you know, a Dior, you know, so very big companies like that. And last year when the conversation was being had with us, it, it, it seemed as though it was very, you know, futuristic in nature. Right. Um, and I think a large part of that comes from persons not necessarily being able to see the applicability to their yes. detail est yes. establishment. But that's the first thing that comes to mind when I think about AR and VR. I actually remember a project that um, we worked on with one of the companies that's inside of my group that we do um, strategy for. Mm -hmm. And this was, I think, in 2018. I think it was. And what, what we actually did with that company, maybe it was 2017, was we actually did um, VR headsets for touring houses. So right. we were going on a diaspora um, engagement. We were doing a diaspora campaign to help build up um, the potential for persons in the diaspora to purchase homes for people in the Caribbean region. Because, you know, we have a very big diaspora kind of link, right? Correct. And, and so we had these VR headsets and we did this big tour. Um, we went to Canada, we went to a couple of the states in, um, in the US and we went to UK. I was on the UK leg because one of our team members became ill. And it was just so cool to actually see persons who were thinking about buying a place for them grandmother or, <laughs> you know, their, their niece or nephew and they were had on the goggles and they were touring the house, they're climbing up the stairs if it's a tall wow. house. And and so I thought, you know, my gosh, that was what, five years ago? Right. And you would think that these persons would have now become a, accustomed to seeing that kind of interaction, but yet still it's still, you know, somewhat far fetched. I think that's a yeah. great use case. It's you know, touring homes, virtual home tours. Maybe you don't even have to have people going to the actual sites. You can have them coming just to your your office. Similarly, for um for smaller establishments, even like boutiques, you know, persons can put on and try on clothing. You know, see themselves in different outfits. Maybe see yourself with a hairstyle if you're going to a um to a stylist. And then of course, if you want to get into now um the more established established organizations talk about education and how students can interact with with virtual environments through um, augmented reality so so there's lots of different ways that we can apply it but again 
You can have all the technology in the world if the persons on the other end are not ready for it, are not at demand for it, then it won't it won't take. And and this is where, you know, uh, when there was a lot of uproar, there was a lot of memes, jokes about Facebook announcing the change to, to Meta and building meta. the Metaverse. And, you know, again, people uh, for the most part, I've seen people across the region talking about it strictly from the surface level, making the memes, making the jokes or whatever, right? But to me, wh- I think the biggest thing that Facebook is doing, whether you like Facebook or not, I think the biggest thing Facebook has done is they are going to make mainstream yeah. augmented reality, virtual yeah. reality, NFTs. Because yeah. well, I want a, a use case scenario that I could see and I would love to see, and it would, it would make sense, is for people around the world to be able to experience some of our digital some digital tourism. I would love yeah. for them to be able to see some of these Absolutely. unique spots. You could yes. take a tour, like let's just say if you got to yeah. tour Duns River Falls virtually, yes. and then after you've done that, you're like, oh, wow, now I, now I have to go to I Jamaica. Have to go. I, I have yes. to go to Jamaica, right, Absolutely. and experience the real thing. So I would love to see um, digital tourism. Um, I would love to see the entire region starts to invest in that. And again, I think with Facebook bringing about the metaverse, I think everybody else is going to now push everything with respects to the metaverse into, into full drive and it'll be more mainstream and more people in the Caribbean are going to start to look up, you know, what the heck this metaverse is, you know, why is metaverse showing up on my phone? What is, what are these things? I think it's going to make more people start to ask the questions and that could only help bring about you know, a uh, change now, or at least sooner rather than later. Um, b- before we move on from that, though, um, NFTs and music. Jamaica is leading the way with NFTs and music. Um, without, I mean, without diving in too too deep into, because we have speakers coming in for that. You know, how does this how does this help Caribbean culture? Because you know, we've always been in in a space where everybody wanted to migrate to go get signed. And, you know, they never really come back. But how does this kind of help Caribbean artists stay in the Caribbean but still make money off of their craft? Yeah, well, I think we're at, we actually saw some of that happening during the, during the pandemic itself. Um, and I think one of the things that I really like about the NFT approach is just our ability to, to be those creators and feel secure around our creations, right? So whether it's art or it's music, we can actually stay put and for for those of us who get our visas denied we don't have to worry (laughs) we don't have to worry necessarily about you know whether we have to go to these different embassies because persons will be able to participate through these digital mediums and i really feel that this is actually a game changer for the creative industry and the entertainment industry if we can take advantage of it and make it more public make it more mainstream as you've said so whether you're a part of the metaverse or we have some other kind of um, entertainment or creative community that is actively pushing this to the forefront because i think that's part of it too you know i think we don't necessarily interact with it enough you know regular folk don't necessarily get to interact with it enough to understand and appreciate what we're trying to put out there. But I, yeah. I agree with you that I think it's a game changer. And I'm looking forward to seeing our artists take advantage of this new space. Yeah, I, I fully agree. And again, just seeing some of the Jamaican artists, I think who was, I think it was Morgan Heritage was the first to drop mm-hmm. uh, their their new album on an NFT. Um, somebody else from Jamaica came in right, right around the same time and did the same thing. So again, I just like seeing the fact that, you know, Caribbean artists are already doing it or starting to do it. Um, And I think now that Facebook has made this big announcement, I think more people, regular Joes are going to start to now look into these things because they're going to, Facebook is bringing in NFTs, AR, VR into every facet of our life. And I mean, we know that Facebook is still the largest social media network in the the entire Caribbean. So it will bring awareness and hopefully we can start to see a little bit more of a, of a change of attitude when those things come in. Now, as we start to wrap up, Stacy, yeah. tell me yeah. what are you most excited for um, throughout this three-day conference? What is that? What is that one or two things that you are that you personally are stoked for? You know what? Um, I like when we are able to not just deliver value 
um, at an event, but then we have that lasting experience after. And so I'm really excited about the platforms that we're going to be launching mm -hmm. that are really geared towards making an impact in the region, um, starting with Jamaica in some instances first, but definitely with the platforms that we're going to be launching and um, also with a new program for um, persons who are interested in advancing themselves in the tech space. So um, the first platform we talked a little bit about, which is the B2B marketplace that we're launching where um, the MSMEs can actually find help, um, find vendors right. that offer the transformation capabilities um, that they need through technology. The second platform that we're launching, which is actually um, available for the Caribbean as a whole, is um, a crowdfunding and crowd investing platform called the Tech Alliance Fund. Fund, and um, and the, the the whole thing around the Tech Alliance Fund is that we want to be able to help. Um, tech organizations, as well as individuals, even your entity, um, Karan, if you're seeking to raise money to support your business or what you're doing, this platform was built for you and it's managed by the JTDA. I like um, money. Yes, <laughs> yes. And so, you know, there are many of us, um, our organization included, that have a real challenge with fundraising through the traditional donor entities <laughs> um, that seem to, to to gravitate towards the same persons all the time yeah. and so what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to create access for those of us who are here doing good work right impactful work that can't get access to those funds because there's a big world out there and anybody can want to give right to meaningful right. causes and then for the tech professionals out there who want to figure out exactly what it is they are learning, um, um, what they need to learn, if they want to have a career in tech, or maybe they already have one and they want to expand their skills. We are launching a new partnership with um, what used to be the British Computer Society. They've also rebranded to the IT Institute for Char um, Char Institute of Chartered IT Professionals. We're launching a new program that will give persons access to their member benefits, which includes assessing your current level of tech skills um, and being able to find people in the Caribbean region that offer training for you to enhance your skills. We're gonna be launching that, um, that new partnership at the conference. And of course, as a female leader and a woman in tech, um, and someone who is very interested in seeing women in tech take their true place and to actually expand the vision for our young girls in STEM and STEAM. The women in tech conversations, which we have on um, both Wednesday and Thursday, are going to be really epic for those of us out there who want to see female leaders in the tech space. Um, I'm championing that effort myself as somebody that has been in love with tech since I was nine till now when I am a new age. I won't say the number. Love it. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Stacy, before we go, I want to run the Biz Tech Conference ad just so that people can, if they were on the fence about this yes. conference from this discussion, I hope that the, the video we're about to run gives you a little bit more information and I hope you guys sign up. So bear with us, Stacy. Don't go nowhere. We're going to quickly look at the event video for the BizTech 2021 conference. Hi, I'm Alexa Beckford, Program Manager at the Jamaica Technology and Digital Alliance. This year we have something truly amazing for you. Biz Tech Conference, unleashing the power of tech within the Caribbean, November 10 to 12. Now what I love about this conference is that we have so many innovative things to show you and enlighten you about the tech trends in the Caribbean. We have a hybrid event planned for you. Yes, I said it, virtual and face-to-face. -face. View our conference exhibition at UA headquarters, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. November 10, meet Liz the Robot. Interact with IoT devices. See the latest in smart and safe home solutions. November 11, view and purchase NFT art. Try our virtual reality experience. Don't forget to tune in virtually to learn more about the trends in tech in the Caribbean. Day 3, Fintech Friday. I'm so excited about that November 12th, which is totally virtual. Learn more about e-commerce, investing opportunities, and financial opportunities in 
Tech. What are you waiting for? Register today at biztechcom.com. Wonderful. <laughs> I see I see Desiree say she is not on the fence anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Desiree, can't wait to see you. <laughs> love it. I love it. I love it. Stacy, do you have any closing remarks for the Digipreneur family tonight? Yeah, guys, I just want to say that we've worked really hard at this conference. Um, we are really excited about all the things that we have prepared to share with you. We want to thank, of course, our sponsors because we couldn't have done this without them. We want to big up Phase 3, Simtai Consulting, Microsoft, who are that top tier. We also want to thank SAP, MC Systems, Maname. We have so many of our big sponsors, Epic Transformation, NCB, our wicked good commercial bank. We want to thank all of our sponsors. And if I've forgotten anybody, just know that you are in our thoughts. Um, and please to visit biztechconf, B-I-Z-T-E-C, C-E-C-H-C-O-N-F dot com to register because we have so much in store. Oh, and by the way, whole heap of giveaways, whole heap of giveaways. So if you have no other incentives other than to come and enjoy some of the things that we have to share, then please join us if for nothing else but that. So looking forward to seeing everybody. And Karen, by the way, is going to be um, on one of our panels talking about innovation, right? So we don't want to miss out on um, on Karen's um, conversation that we're going to be having. So join us, everyone. We're looking forward to having you at BizTech 2021. I love it. Stacy. listen, anytime you come true... <laughs> Everybody, give Stacey a round of applause. Please give Stacey a round of applause. Please make thank sure you guys you. go and register for the conference. It's going to be fun. Stacey, thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule to come and talk to us. This event is loaded. The topics that are being addressed are needed, and we cannot stress that enough. If you want to see how to grow your business digitally, if you want to be participating in e-commerce, if you need to learn how to get funding, if you finally want to learn what on earth is a non-fungible token okay. <laughs> come to this event stacy okay. thank you for taking the time and thank you for coming in tonight thank you so much for having me karen big up yourself and big up to everybody that's watching this broadcast and we'll see it at a later date see you on wednesday love it stacy you stay there i'm gonna talk to you offline as for the rest of the digipreneur family listen i hope you guys enjoyed the conversation tonight we got into some really, really good stuff. Make sure you guys are registering at BizTechConf. You know what? Let me just share that screen real quick so you guys see it. Register at BizTechConf.com. All right? The link to the website is going to be in the show notes. You guys can also watch the replay if there's any information you guys want to hear back again. The replay is going to be available as soon as we come off of the live stream tonight. I hope to see each and every one of you there for the three-day event. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you guys enjoyed tonight's live stream, please drop some fire in the chat. You guys know how I do. Your energy gives me energy and that is how it allows me to do what I do for you guys drop some fire in the chat i will see you guys on the conference i'll see you guys this week all right ta-ta and have yourself a wonderful night take care <laughs> you've been listening to the digiboss karan rose we hope your notepad was filled after this episode. Make sure to like, rate, and review the show. The learning doesn't stop, folks. And to make sure you don't miss any gems from the Digiboss, go over and follow him on all social media platforms at Karan Rose. Folks, don't just sit there with a notepad. We need you to implement at least one thing into your business before the next episode. That's the only way your business levels up. Thanks for listening to Digipreneur FM. Now, Go be great.